Well, it's nice to be back here, Ron, after all this time, isn't it? Fantastic. Lovely. And here it is. What do you reckon? Oh, <laughs> oh, it looks fantastic. I like the way they've hung that one, the two of them together, and they kind of work. Yeah, yeah. No, it works well. It should be nice to leave it like that. Yeah. It's, it's really lovely coming in and seeing the show and I'm um, actually looking at all the work around the walls we did. Um, it's kind of lovely. And we were talking about the first time we actually painted together because we, we met quite a long time ago. We, we, we met with that print, print yeah, show. Studio. Yeah, series. Yeah. Which was um, beautiful. with Ron sort of coming into the artist studios and drawing. So that's the first time I met Ron, when he organised that. And um, and then he left space on the plate for us to draw. Yeah. And then, I'm not sure how we got to Tweed, but there was a time when you were here doing something, or maybe it was when that show was here, and then we started to paint together. And um, it was looking toward Mount Warning, if I remember in the middle of, I think it was Condon or somewhere like that, mm. and uh, you were giving me a try out of your paints, and so we were, um, we were trying that, and Ewan had used those sort of, that process for a long time, and was sort of comfortable with that, so I gave it a go. Yeah, yeah it, was quite, it was quite a lovely thing. I've, I've got a, you know, a, a process set up for on plain air, but you, you were normally drawing, weren't you? And this was a sort of painting and you were giving it this a go. This was something different. And then from there I started to use the pen and inks and, and mm. things changed for me mm. after that. But it got me going, yeah. got me started. But we've actually travelled a lot together. We've um, been all over the place together. Since that initial meeting, we, um, you know, I guess there's quite a few artists that quite like to go out together and work together on plain air. Um, I think it's a really lovely social thing and not, not everyone likes to do it, a lot of people aren't very social that way. But um, And you kind of find people that you work well with that are not too, not too in your face and give you a bit of space. Probably everybody tends to go off and work on their own. Yeah. Um, and um, we've been on quite a few of those trips, but we've also been on quite a few of trips just with two of us. Um, I'm not sure what the first one of those was. Do you remember that? No. Probably I think France. we started oh, right. collaboration firstly to make prints, hmm. and then that that developed on into other, um, you know, uh, expeditions. And sometimes just us. Sometimes other people were included as well. And. Uh, but you were, you'd been doing that residency in Alleyrac in France and you invited us along, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, and that worked out well. And then the second trip we worked on the very large um, artist book. And uh, I think that was exhibited mm. in the same space. Hearsay yeah. with Hearsay, Lloyd Jones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that was, um, so we actually worked on that over there, didn't we? Mm. Yeah, so that, um, that got exhibited here. So we've actually had quite a long relationship with Tweed, really. Um, it's mm. been fantastic. Mm. Um, we, we certainly had a show of the prints that I've done with Ron at one stage, which is, I think, the trip where we started painting together here. Yeah. And, I mean, in terms of process, um, I probably still work pretty much the same way that I worked when I was with Ron, but Ron's sort of moved on to better things now, haven't you? You've left my well, style behind. Yeah, I found, I found Ewan's style uh, of working uh, was probably a little bit Watch what you say. Uncontrolled. <laughs> for the way. <laughs> no. Um, I just wanted to work a bit fine. So I started to try things like fountain pens and pen and inks and uh, a bit more watercolour. So a little bit lighter, lighter touch. And, uh, and that seemed to work for me. And uh, I didn't. I don't work as quick as you on work, so I sort of everything slowed down a bit. And uh, uh, you know, I, I um, work on things for quite a long period of time. Well, you tend to, to need a pretty much a day in a place, don't you? Yeah. Whereas, yeah. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, it's the the, the tear and the what is it? Hair and the tortoise, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's and right. I, I sort of tend to you know burn myself out after a, a couple of hours. Um, and then need to go and have a swim in the beach. So, but was that your first, 
kind of did you do a lot of on plane air work because you were mainly sort of we before that you I'm just trying to think I, I was probably working on a lot of studio stuff I think hmm. Uh, hmm. I'd go out and gather information but no I didn't do so much on plane air work until then hmm. yeah and it's um it's a kind of a lovely thing on plane air because it well, for me, it's a bit of a holiday. I, I mean, and you'll see that in the works, the kind of the idea of having a bit of a holiday. You don't have to think too much about what you're doing. Plonk yourself down in something that vaguely interests you, and then you're attempting to make a painting out of what's what's there. Mm. So it's that sense of look and put. But you are also attempting to produce a work that works, that you know, compositionally and it's got to actually work as well. But everything's in front of you, so the answers feel like they're in front of you rather than you've got to dredge them out of your head. And I just love that aspect of it. Yeah, I find it very exciting to find a place that I'm interested in and sit down there and um, it sort of dictates, like you're saying, it dictates in a way what we're doing and um, we have to find the answers within that particular space mm. and framework that we're actually working in front of but it's sort of for me it's also a great privilege to be able to work out in the open space and no one's bothering us so. well they are lots of people <laughs> bothering you but um, well they don't bother me they, they bother they bother you, you <laughs> they don't bother me ron hyde's a bit better than i look a bit more serious so they don't bother me <laughs> <laughs> well you have got that t-shirt too with the what you know with piss off written on behind on the back um, that helps. That does. But no, well, you put the head in here for, uh, headphones on. That always helps too. We did get we did get a lot of people um, talking to us. Well, I did, but most of them were lovely. You know, they were lovely. It was quite a few people. Um, and when people see me painting, and they might be right, but they it looks a bit like I don't know, have any idea of what I'm doing. And they often express that to me and. Um, either with the old, you know, keep it up, or, or, um, or you're doing you know, okay. Yeah. That's you're really appalling. And um, in a way, that is what I try and do. I try and create a sense of, of chaos, you know, and then try and pull it into, pull it together, um, make it work. But it's a different, it's a particular way of working. I'm sure when they look at Ron's, they don't think that. They think, oh, lucky, lucky, we've got at least one good artist around here, because <laughs> that other guy sure doesn't know what he's doing. But um, yeah, no, it's it's the most beautiful beautiful thing to do. And the other other aspect of it, you're um, exploring a place. You're looking, you, you know, you kind of um, yeah, looking around. Yeah, checking. it's like you're sometimes seeing this place for the first time, or you know, the feeling like you're the first person to go there, even though you're not. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a great privilege. I tend to make sure it has enough shade because, because I'm going to be there for quite a long time. I have to make sure that in four or five hours when I'm still there, it's still going to be shaded a bit so that uh, it's hard for me, particularly where I live in North Queensland, to find um, good shaded areas uh, where I won't get totally burnt to a crisp. So that's a really important thing. And then just an area that I think sort of says something to me, really, speaks to me. Um, and it's sort of, I don't know, got a sort of rightness about it for what I do. I can't really explain it any more than that, yeah. Well, there was a sense of compromise a little bit with, with this trip because I, I did gravitate towards the beaches and the coasts and I do love to have people walking through. So I've got someone, I mean, I just love the kind of relationship between the the figure in the landscape, but to me, that the sort of animates the uh, animates the place. I think there's one or two that don't. That one hasn't got a figure in it. Mm. Um, but and I find working in rainforesty areas about the most challenging thing I could do. But I actually really enjoyed that too. I enjoyed the fact that um, it was a challenge. Mm. Yeah. But I think Ron's uh, the idea of physical comfort is really important that you can kind of see this a fantastic view, but you're perched on a rock and you're sort of balanced like that. And I've tried to do that now and then, and it's just a total disaster. You know, you, unless you're relatively comfortable and shade is incredibly important up here, um, mm. 
you know, you, you, you get incredibly frustrated. So you want to put that frustration into the work rather than into staying comfortable. So I carry a little table around you, you do too. You've got a chair as well, haven't you? A particular chair that I tend to work on a bit, yeah. So you, you tend to kind of have a setup which is quite quick. It's, um, you're not spending, you know, two hours setting yourself up. I've got a kind of a box where all the paint's in and I can probably be painting within five minutes. I can probably be actually working. Uh, there's nothing for me more frustrating than there's this beautiful spot and I'm you know, trying to set up, it's um, mm. annoying. And you have to be able to carry everything too. Yeah, because sometimes you might walk, uh, you know, a quarter of a mile or something, so you have to be able to carry whatever you're going to work with. Yeah. Mm. The thing that's the best thing you can ever find is a, a picnic table that's covered and mm. um, with a, an okay view. I often think the best thing is to find a, a, a place that's lovely to paint and then the view comes after. Whatever you've got in front of you, that's, the, that's it. And it's amazing how you can invent um, around that, how you can use what's in front of you because it's not something you'd normally use. So you're forced to um, confront something you might not normally do. Yeah, so that work there is um, looking from the table. So I was sitting on the right hand, the one in the far right corner. I was sitting on the right hand side of the table. I think you were on the left hand mm. side. Uh, looking toward where the people were going down to have their swims. Uh, yeah, so right there. And those two on the right, the top and bottom ones yeah. there from that day as well. Yeah. So, um, different light, different... Um, it's actually a really good spot to, yeah, to work. Yeah, it was. It was beautiful. One of the things that's interesting with the On Plain Air work and this show in particular is we didn't get an opportunity to take these works back to the studio and develop them in, into anything else. And um, that often is something that happens for me, that I'll go to a place, I'll you know, do a whole lot of studies, I really love them. I did that, went to the Galapagos Islands and I've got all these studies and um, my wife keeps asking me, when are you going to do some Galapagos paintings? When are you, you know, which... Um, and, it, and it's kind of true, it, it, it's having that space to then develop them. And these works, I fundamentally see them as studies towards that, studies towards something that will go into the larger work. But they're not, it doesn't necessarily go in in a direct way. You don't take the study home and then copy, slavishly copy it or blow it up. But as you're painting, you're getting a sense of, I guess, how you deal with certain stuff, you know, how you deal with rocks and how you deal with the figures and, and, and how it all operates and, and it's a kind of a, um, to, me, to me it's a bit like scales on the piano, it's, it's just going through the motions and um, that then kind of comes, it comes through into the studio works in a way which adds a little bit of freshness because if you're there and you're painting, you know, I want a big dark shape, hill shape here you've actually got a bit of a sense in your head of, of what actually happens, how the rocks and the land and the sea and how everything comes together, how it all sort of fits fits in rather than a kind of a, um, a kind of a, a stylized way that you know works but looks the same every time you do it. I mean the framing um, really uh, sets them off. I mean, I was saying to Ron that some of those black and white ones, we did, you couldn't see them that clearly uh, mm. when, they're, when they're not framed. When you see them framed, they just are beautiful things. And the glass tends to, um, it's a sort of a glazing of the, of the works on paper. It gives them a quality that, um, it just makes yeah, them look yeah. finished. Yeah. And, and it's true that when people see me painting them, they look like, you know, they look like crap, basically. Uh, and when you put the frame on them, it just tight, you know, it really tightens them up and it allows you to see them in a way that's very difficult. Because if you think you're looking at them down on the beach and toss them aside and um, you, you're not sure and then you get them back. I, I did fiddle with a couple of them back in the studio. There was a couple of them that, um, well, the cave, the, the cave one, you know, I added a figure in to the one I wasn't that keen on, which sounded a bit bankrupt, but it um, was one of the paintings I like the most now. 
The collaborative nature of it is something that I think is really, really important. The, the fact that the two of us are effectively looking at the exact same places yeah. and yet with such a different way of looking. And yet we work in a very similar way. Um, you know, there's no, no one's going to have any difficulty telling which ones are Ron's and which ones are mine. Yeah. And I think that was a sort of special part of it. I mean, does that, that does certainly you do a lot of work in the studio too, don't you? Yeah, I, I think mine may be a, a little bit different at times. For example, the black and white works, um, I may not push those further in the studio. They're, they're in a way, some of them are, I see as quite complete in that sort of finished sort of work because I spend a little bit longer time. Um, whereas the work I did from the resident studio, even though it was a plein air work, I would see as a sort of a studio work in mm. a sort of sense because some of the studio works that I do are larger because I can't take a smaller paper or whatever out into the, into the bush. Uh, so I might work on something a, a metre long or a couple of metres long that I couldn't physically take out. So for me it's more to do with sort of size in a way and sometimes in the amount of time that I can spend on it which might be a two week period rather than a day period. They're yeah. so observational your, your works aren't they especially these yeah. works the detail in them is phenomenal and it's not something you probably could do in the studio is it? I mean um, um, I could yeah I, I don't know if I'd continue on with those but I might continue on with the same subject mm. but uh, treated in a very different way, yeah. And what? And then they might become etchings, mightn't they? Oh, they could become etchings, or they just could become large watercolours mm. or drawings. Mm. Yeah. I certainly think, you know, that they work as works on their own, um, and and we all use them for, you know, there's all sorts of reasons for yeah. painting outside. But I do think one of the one of them is keeping yourself fresh. You're looking. You're actually looking. You're actually there and you're thinking what does it look like what does that look like mm -hmm. and a lot of the time when you're in the studio you're you're remembering or you're imagining or you're making up and a lot of people will use photographs and that's another way of of bringing that experience back into the studio um you know sometimes i'll use photographs and they're quite a nice way of jogging the memory but that's kind of what that's, that's doing. It, it allows me to be um, a little bit more, it feels a bit like I know the subject and I can kind of do it quickly. I don't have to kind of think, now what does that tree look like again? It's all, almost like you have a memory um, of how it works. Yeah, I was thinking about the, the difference between working from life, like we did, and working uh, from a photograph in the studio. And um, I really feel that um, working from life is interesting for me because it helps me remember a place. And remembering a place is, um, is really a, just such an important thing for me. And I tend to, if I get an opportunity, keep going back to the same place and doing different works from different, slightly different positions of that same place. And eventually it's sort of, you know, it's like you know the place. You've never taken a photograph of the place, but you sort of know it from being there and looking at it and observing it. So these sort of works for me are incredibly important as far as just knowing, knowing a lot about a place and learning about a place. I like using um, uh, pens a lot. Uh, I like using fountain pens and I like using dip pens. And this is a, a dip pen work uh, where I've used a white ink on black paper. Uh, and I like that because I can sort of carve into the landscape as if I'm carving in with light. So when I'm working on something like this, I'm looking at the, where the light is and trying only to look at the light and represent the light. So the light is the thing that makes the form. It sort of, it describes the form. Um, so it's, uh, it's a fun way of working me, starting off with a completely black image and illuminating it with light. So this um, image is 
uh, was made at the, the, the very base of Mount Warning before you start to climb up. And uh, there were some huge rocks that really appealed to me. So I sort of set myself up in the shade just beside the path where the water was coming down and uh, began to work. This, this painting was a little beautiful little bridge just outside of Yukai and we were looking for places to, to paint. And I did, I did one painting from down below and as the, as the sun moved around I had to, find, had to find a bit of shade. But it was quite an amazing spot because all these guys would come in, in their four wheel drives with sort of these awful looking dogs, wild dogs on the back that were obviously used for pig hunting. And it must have been a, a, a spot for them all to come to wash their dogs. They'd all bring their dogs and um, they'd head down here and wash the blood off them or something. I don't know what it was, but it was, um, it was quite a beautiful thing. So I was trying to get these dogs, trying not to look at them in case they'd come and attack me. But um, yeah, and it was, um, but just a compositional thing of, it, of attempting to get this twist in the road, a kind of a strong structural element. And you can see how I've kind of narrowed that in there. I did play around with putting things in here, but it just didn't work. And to try and push the bridge away, because I was actually sitting pretty much down at bridge level. Um, but I was quite a pleased with that one, yeah. Just as I look at it, I can kind of see all the different areas I was trying to make sense of, the sort of the light coming down the bank and the shadows coming across here. Um, looks like I got a bit lazy in there and just put a few splashes in, but you know, it's, um, it's lovely to see them because that was one that was quite hard to resolve really, especially the bridge. And there certainly is a sense that I want to try and get in there of that, in this case the dog, but in most of the times the, the figure, that they're just moving through. They're, they're, um, I, I guess it's about absence, it's about that sense when you're looking at a landscape, you're often looking at it through memory and memory of people and them not being there or them being there. Um, yeah, it just it feels like a, quite a profound thing for me and if ever I see the figure in the landscape, it just sort of adds a, it adds a level to it of, of that aspect of our, of our kind of interaction with the landscape. So I would have started that one without a dog um, and, the, and just seeing those dogs up there, they were fantastic. But of course they are fleeting and it's quite hard to paint them. As most people know, they don't stay very still. Um, and you push them around and move them around and change them around and the, the paint will uh, aid you in that. If you lose and find the figure. And that, and that gives them a sense of them also almost finding their own place in the landscape, I hope. I hope for that.